वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचानूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु ओडेशन लॉर्ड कृष्ण द प्रिसेप्टर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ द फोर्सेज ऑफ डार्कनेस बिस्टोअर ऑफ इमोटैलिटी श्रीमद्भगवद्गीता इन चैप्टर सिक्स entitled atma sanjam yoga the yoga where atma is the focus of your concentration your meditation your samadhi atma sanjam normally translated yoga meditation verse number 10 योगी उंजीत युंजीत सतत आत्मा नम्रहसी स्थित एकाकी यत चित्तात्मा निराशीर परिग्रह सेवन पॉइंट्स आर ब्रॉट इन टू दिस वर्स योगी शुड कॉन्स्टेंटली फिक्स हिज माइंड ऑन द डिवाइन सेल्फ ही शुड अबाइड इन सॉलिट्यूड not in this crowd <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> keep his body and mind under his control renounce desires and cravings for possessions now try to understand the because each verse lots of teachings are condensed in each verse in this setting first the importance of god being the focus of your mind god word movement that is your that's the real religion god is the truth the world is maya your mind must flow towards god and the function is more like putting in allegorical way your mind acts like a cloud obstructing light of the sun and in its whirling movement creates a lot of commotion lot of trouble and so forth practice of yoga allows your mind to become purified not to stay opaque the cloud that will become softer it doesn't have to be so much patience to have all softness at least create a hole of softness <laughs> let in a little ray of light that's all and once that enters your mind a switch has occurred in your vision and that switch is <laughs> karma to akarma karma always living your life based on how karma leads you into your life fruit of karma and wait for the future that will change according to the change of your karmas so karma based movement that you have to understand is not the goal because no matter how wonderful karma its fruit is in the realm of the world of time and space 
And whatever is there in the world of time and space is not permanent. It can stay for 50 years. It cannot stay even for one second. There are many a slip between cup and the lip. So, how can we be fulfilled by a shaky attainment? So, karma based attainment should not keep you deluded. Now there should enter in your heart, how can I first understand the karma-based movement is constantly limiting you, degrading you, and keeping you in a state of dream rather than being awake. Because karma-based changes that occur in you is not your reality. They may look good, they may look, of course, Coming to the practical reality, all this is not meant to tell you that you should not do good karmas. Shift your attention to doing good karmas, but for what? For better fortune, for more money, or more popularity, or more family extensions? No, karma you should do so that you find the source of karmic bondage, find the source where you don't depend on karmas at all. Simple way to understand, you started your life with karmic bondage, end up destroying karma and be liberated. That's called turning karma into a karma. A karma is negation of karma. It's kind of a geographical, <laughs> not geographical, algebraical problem. <laughs> and Gita has given you a subtle key. While doing your karma, if you add vikarma to it, a specialized attitude, a specialized discipline, such as japa, prayer, generosity, goodness of your heart, devotion, meditation, understanding, yogyana, all this in simple way, if you bring in integral yoga, then karma is now blending with vikarma, specialized karma. And the result is karma becomes completely neutralized. Sometimes there is muddy water and you have a special chemical put into it. So muddy water plus the special chemical, pure water. Karma plus bi karma, a karma. And that is your project. So yogi should constantly fix his mind on the divine self. Let me extend a little bit. Godward movement turns your action into karma yoga. Everyday duty and life in life, whether you are doing it for yourself, for family, for people around, every function that you do in this world, you can view it as adoration to God. Even while taking baths, attending in your body, you can develop a spiritual understanding. Devo devalayo prokto. You have come to the Himalayas, Ganges in front of you, flowing. How do you know it? Right in your bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> and the entire body from toes to the head is a divine temple. 
nothing is created by you or by any foxy intellect. <laughs> it's, in, it's entirely created by God's hand. And therefore, it is a temple of all temples. It is here in this body when you enshrine God, you attain liberation. And for that purpose, you go to all pilgrimage centers, etc. But ultimately, you have to come to in your own body and discover God's presence. So, have a profounder understanding of the role of your body. So, even ordinary little activities in your life, are a part of Godward movement. If you bring that, karma become, begins to turn into karma yoga. Everything is progressive, patience is needed. But that is one objective, one goal. But while you do karma, karma is enhanced by your feelings. Feeling aspect. The more you love someone, the more you can serve the person, the more you can do lots of things, endure sufferings with smile. But now, become wiser. What makes you love anybody while loving whom you are loving? The bones? <laughs> The skeletons. You are loving this, this spark of divine light, life expressing through every person. It's a cosmic life. And behind that life, the source is God Himself. Ghat ghat me hai sai ramta. In every personality, every bit that happens, what makes all your all the activities that go on in your body, the cells and bacteria and allergies and all those and various chemicals, how they are handled by your body, how repairs go on, metabolic movement, all this behind that is the divine hand. And this, to enter all this in your heart requires its own time. In other words, what I am simply leading you to understand that when you are loving anybody, you are loving God through that person. So, simple switch. No, not loving the body, but through the anybody, you are loving body, body. The real source of all bodies, God. And therefore, Every occasion to love, to do good deeds, becomes a joyous occasion. If you don't have, every occasion of love becomes a form of attachment, dependence, delusion. What a big difference is there. And there is change occurs not by external, running away and doing some head stats. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> all that I'm going to say, they are all needed, all the asanas, pranayas, to prepare you for that. So, that which turns your feelings to bhakti, and bhakti inspires you to have better and better feelings. 
more forgiving, more humble, more thankful, more discovering the joy of divine beloved in the heart of people whom you love. This world becomes now a tremendous field of opportunity. So much so, there is no room for hatred at all. Vishwamitra, that friendly heart that loves all, think of, that's real success, not the shrinking heart. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, and that is the project of bhakti, seeing God in each other, seeing God behind the entire world, and loving God. Once you have developed that, your karma is bound to become a karma. Your karmic movement will be negated, neutralized, because love of God leads you to eternity, immortality. Karma leads you to mortality. Between mortality and immortality, difference is the I. <laughs> Realize your I. I am that am I. And when bhakti begins to develop, now the function of your mind, the mind that always, whenever takes up any project, it creates a sankalpa, this what should I do? The mind works with will, how to handle the will and how to direct that will. This whole project becomes dhyana yoga. Now, handling the mind, becomes more and more spontaneous as you are practicing yoga in a profound way, integral yoga. Dhyan, sankalpa movement in your mind becomes dhyana yoga. You are always alert to examine your will and Allow even in, in your will to gain some worldly thing. Understand behind the will and your success, it's a divine will that made you successful. So the secret of your will lies in doing the will of God. You will to do the will of God. And be free from all wills. When people drink this swill, swill and shaking goes along with a drunken life. <laughs> so that's Raja Yoga, Dhyana Yoga. And now you're understanding. Always you understand by turning to your ego, do you like it? <laughs> and if ego likes it, you feel you're, you are very wonderful using your intellect. You're using your intellect for pleasing the ego. That type of, that create keeps you in their world of karma. But you begin to use your intellect to understand. Not, don't use your intellect for chinta. Chinta means worrying about the world, past, present, and future. Use your intellect for chintan. Chintan is an aspect of vichar. 
inquire, who am I? What can I do to discover self-confidence? What can I do to allow the higher self in me to conquer the lower? And what will ultimately end up with? Who is this self? Who am I? How much power, glory abides in my soul? And how can I experience it? So that type of movement is Jnana Yoga. So even while your intellect is doing the practical things, and your every success with your intellect, instead of pleasing the ego, inflating the ego, it humbles the ego. There's a big switch occurs. Then it becomes Jnana Yoga. Mind is going on working the same way. All practical realities being faced. But subtle changes occur within you. And that's, that's where the secret of spiritual life lies. Otherwise, in the name of spiritual life, people build up in their mind such shocking con concepts that it is very troublesome. <laughs> I will not go into that detail. <clears throat> so a yogi should constantly fix the mind on the divine self. Your action becomes karma yoga. Emotion becomes bhakti yoga devotion, path of devotion. Will becomes dhyana yoga or raja yoga, yoga of meditation. And your reasoning and understanding aspect becomes jnana yoga. All together is one yoga in four aspects. That's called God word movement. Now, whatever is being described is disciplinary as well as from advanced point of view, we need to understand. First, he should abide in solitude. Again, if you just, without understanding, just heard the word solitude. Go to Google, see where can I find solitude. <laughs> They'll point out to many caves where you have perfect solitude. Let me lead you on to that level also. That also has a practical reality, but not go to extreme. Go away, far away, where you don't even have money to buy your <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so solitude has put you to a horrible condition. <laughs> so that is not real solitude. But then, for temporary means, advanced stage solitude means if you go on developing devotion to God, live your life with what I have already described by practicing integral yoga, A space begins to develop within your personality where you feel in solitude, not disturbed by the world. In your own heart, a mystic space appears. And there you are in absolute solitude. Outwardly, you can be dynamically involved in performing your duties of different types. Inwardly, you are enjoying union with God 
in profound solitude. This has been said so quickly, now it is a progressive movement. Day by day, if you are doing your duties well, not keeping your life in a very dis in a discordant manner, you don't know when you are going to wake up, when you are going to sleep, you don't know where you are going to be, in Miami or in Alaska or... <laughs> You are moving in all directions. <laughs> you can't progress in a real way. Yes, your iPad will progress. <laughs> you will bring lots and lots of pictures. <laughs> so real progress requires enjoying in internal calmness. So that begins to develop within you and you enjoy a Kant. And in your understanding, the word seclusion, a Kant, one alone, doesn't bring to your mind a sense of desert-like emptiness. It brings to your mind a sense of hmm, heaven-like God. All wondrous trees are there. All the peacocks have come together. Cuckoos. <laughs> and every leaf. So, and you are in Ekanth. Another way to understand about Ekant, <coughs> coming down to more kindergarten level, which is also important, choose, if you have to choose, a place where you want to do your sadhana, then find a spot or a place or ashram that has good association, a good resource from ancient teachers and gurus. Say for example, you find a spot where Mahatma Gandhi used to do his prayer. Not for one single day, but many days and years. Now, the idea that somebody has practiced there, and the same space you have, you have chosen, it has an impact on you in a profound way. The ideal is that you shouldn't even depend on that. But in early stage when you need different levels of sadhana, and even you are advanced, there should be that type of expression of faith to set up example for others to giving a special importance highlight to those places like places that are sacred because of buddha who practice meditation under people tree ashwatha tree and similarly, any place that has divine association, association with Shankaracharya and great Mahatmas, Swami Shivananda and many others, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Vivekananda, any, any association has an impact on your mind. It makes you easy to move, to practice sadhana. But it should not become dependent that unless I be there, I will not succeed in sadhana. Your sadhana will be successful no matter where you are. You are always in the body which is God's 
tempo. Keep your body and mind under his control and renounce desires. Desire for liberation, that's not a problem. If you have desire for liberation, that means you are healthy. If you are healthy, then you are hungry for nutrition. Unhealthy, you are hang hungry to make yourself sick. By for eating <laughs> wrong things, wrong turkeys. <laughs> so, so whenever we talk about control your desire, it is not to control your desire for becoming better, desire for becoming healthy desire for becoming devoted to God, desire for attaining liberation, that is not contradicted. Rather, that is the most commendable development. And that type of desire is not called desire, called aspiration. The desire that is degrading keeps the soul involved in the realm of karma, that desire you have to be very careful of. And your goal should be absolutely rid of desire. Absolutely. If you want to wake up from your dream, you must have absolute desire not to carry from your dream even your needle. <laughs> not the needle part of your dream. You should reconcile with. No desire of this for the world has any room when you have aspiration for God realization. This point has to be understood. You shouldn't develop the idea. I should have laddu in both hands. I love God and I have the worldly desire. <laughs> if you are doing this, you are in a kid level. Dull with mind. and cravings for possession. So, first renouncing desire. Understand desire comes in many stages. Desire in the beginning is vasana, subtle desire. You are led by it, by the smell of it, but you don't really know. <laughs> then desire that expresses through your conscious mind. There are little desires, ichha, kamana. When the same desire is repeated again and again, it becomes strong desires, desire with sankalpa. And if it's very strong, called Krishna. Instead of Krishna, you go after Krishna. Krishna maya jagat. The whole world gives you room for craving. It's neutralized by realizing Krishna Maya Jagat. The whole world is God Himself. So it's not a matter of craving. The craving must completely come, come to an end. So that movement demands aparigraha. <coughs> Do not go after holding things in your possession. Live with practical reality. Utilize things. If you are taking, I'm talking in very natural, normal, ordinary illustration. If you have found that certain food, 
certain vegetable is very nourishing, don't become greedy and bring a ton of that food. <laughs> Bring only to that extent, can you eat it while it is fresh <laughs> and can work for it day by day. <laughs> Same applies to your all your resources. Just don't go after packing it up. Things that you love and are of value, you just want to keep it stored. And then even while you are going to relax, your mind is thinking, who is looking after my store <laughs> and going through countless problems with your mind. Next <coughs> verses 11 and 12, <coughs> they deal with simple disciplinary stage of yoga practice, Raja Yoga. Shuchau deshe pratishthaya shthiram asanam atmana nyatyutshritam nati nicham chairajina kunoshushottaram Tartraiva vagram tatraika gram manaha kritva yatachitendriya kriya upavishyasane yunyad yogam atma vishuddhaye. In a clean spot which is neither too low nor too high, one should spread kusha grass, a deer skin, a cloth, one on top of the other. Thus one establishes a firm seat for the practice of meditation. The practical lesson given at a time when people use those things. <coughs> Listening to it, you should not exactly go after. <laughs> Dear skin, <laughs> Usha grass. The basic point, firstly your spot that you choose, <laughs> choose it with a practical point of view. Say for example you are watching nature in Himalayas going by the Ganges and you sat on a high spot and look, it so looks wonderful. You say to yourself, I am going to put my seat here, I will practice meditation. Remember, <laughs> even before you go to Sabadi, you go to sleep. <laughs> Going to tumble, tumble. <laughs> so, why to take that risk? Likewise, he found a, a spot in a very lower level, a kind of a going deep under the normal level. And there we found so solitary, it's kind of a cave. I should be here doing my meditation. But even the mongoose jumping up. Push, put, put a lot of garbage on your head. <laughs> head. <laughs> so why do you do that? It shouldn't be uh, on a high spot. It shouldn't be on a low spot. <laughs> it should be in a normal setting. Neither too low nor too high. One, spray, one should spread kusha grass, deer skin, all these 
your seat should be there, what should you put upon it, etc., etc. The basic point where you can sit relaxed and a relaxed position you can maintain for a certain duration of time without difficulty. Having seated in, in a meditative pose and having brought the mind to a state of one-pointedness, he should attain mastery over the senses and the mind and practice yoga for the purification of the mind. So there are stages, practice of asana and practice. Asana opens the door to pranayama, pranayama opens the door to pratyahara. Asana begins with your body and the secret behind asana is how to experience a state of relaxation. When you let the whole body become completely relaxed, that's asana jaya. People describe asanjaya in the terms of duration of time. Keep the body steady for three hours, you have conquered. But if three hours you have suffered pain, not a jaya. <laughs> but you have become so relaxed that time doesn't matter. So relaxing the body and letting your mind <laughs> Open freely. In your mind, develop the idea you have joined Lord Vishnu. You are in Shir Sagar, communing with God. And the more your mind becomes Relaxed, not in relaxed ordinarily, more your mind becomes surrendered to God. More your mind enjoys divine communion. Greater is the relaxation of your body. And that has been extended in the technique of yoga nidra. You relax a person and let him, you start telling the person of how he should feel not feel about the body, don't think about worldly things. You start tuning your life force with the cosmic force. <coughs> so all that becomes possible by relaxing. And this relaxing process again, as you advance, doesn't just stay only with the body, you relax your thinking process. You relax your emotions, they are becoming out of control. <laughs> relax everything so that you can follow the path with, with success. And with this I am going to conclude. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvar Bandhana Mrityor Mukshyama Mrita Om Shanti 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 Hari Om